Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at these things called a permutation. Permutation is really uh, a, a way of counting how many ways a set of values or set of objects uh, can be ordered. So let's let's say, for example, I'm looking at the values one, two, and three. So how many different permutations are there for one, two, and three? Well, there's one, two, three. There's one, three, and two. There's two, one, and three. Two, three, and one. Uh, three, one, two, three, two, one. So I can order these in, in, in this case, six, uh, six different ways. So these represent the number of permutations from a set of three if I were to choose three of them. And by that I mean, you know, I'm, I'm allowed to sort uh, all three of them. What if I had three values, but I could only choose two of them? How many different ways can I order two out of those three values? So really, to order two of those three values, I can have a one and two, a one and three, a two and one, a two and three, a three and one, and a three uh, and a two. So here again, I have six or six different ways uh, that I can order two values out of this set of three. Now, what we're going to look at here would be a little bit more complex, only in the case that we're going to start working with larger and larger numbers. Uh, and as the numbers get larger, the number of permutations grows uh, quite substantially. So in this example, uh, we're going to look at uh, ice cream shops. We're going to go out and get some ice cream. Uh, I have two different options. I can pay $4 for two or five. I can get a two scoop or a three scoop ice cream. The prices don't matter one bit. Uh, there's 21 that I can choose from. So instead of just one, two, and three, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, up to 21 different flavors. And I want to see how many different ways can I choose two scoops? Or how many different ways can I choose three scoops out of those 21 flavors? Now we have two different scenarios. Scenario A and B. Scenario B, I can choose each flavor more than once. So if I pick vanilla for the first scoop, I can pick vanilla for the second scoop. I can pick vanilla again for the third scoop if I want. Uh, for part B, I can only pick each flavor once. So if I pick vanilla for the first scoop, uh, it's no longer an option for the second or third scoops. So let's, uh, let's look at scenario A first. <coughs> so here's my ice cream cone. Here's my ice cream cone, scenario A. So here I'm going to pick this first scoop. The first scoop I have 21 flavors. Right? It can be any one of those 21 flavors for the first scoop. The second scoop, well if I can pick the same flavors again, uh, then I still have 21 flavors available to choose from for that second scoop. So here's 21 flavors for that scoop as well. So how many different varieties of ice cream cones can I make if I can choose uh, the same flavors more than once? Well, this is going to be simply 21 times 21, which is 21 squared. And so this is going to equal 21 squared, uh, 441 varieties. So if I pick two flavors out of 21, and I can use the same flavor more than once, then I have uh, 441 different types of ice cream cones that I can produce. Uh, what if I'm going to use three scoops? If I want to have three scoops instead of two scoops, well again, for that third scoop of ice cream, I still would have 21 flavors available, and so this becomes 21 times 21, so this is 21 cubed, and 21 cubed, oops, so that's 21 squared, if I times that by another 21, 9,261. So for that extra, extra dollar from $4 to $5, I get a lot more uh, variety, a lot more possible uh, ice cream cones that uh, that I can produce. So our formula here that we've been using, uh, so this is permutations with 
repetition because I'm allowing myself to choose the same flavor more than once. So the permutation with, repu uh, with um, repetition is equal to n, which is the total number of options available, in this case 21, uh, to the power of little n, which is what is the, the number that we are choosing. So here I have 21, I'm choosing 3. So the total number of options 21, from there I was just going to choose 3. So that's a relatively simple calculation, so we can see how many different permutations uh, are there in this set of 21, if I'm going to choose two or three different, different flavors. Now for part B, this is a more common counting problem uh, with permutations, is that repetition isn't allowed. And so what this means now, for that first scoop of ice cream, I still have 21 flavors, I haven't picked any, so that first scoop of ice cream, I, I can choose any one of the 21 that are available. But now for the second scoop of ice cream, if I've already picked vanilla, vanilla doesn't exist anymore, it's no longer an option for the second scoop. So that second scoop of ice cream, I don't have 21 flavors to choose from, now I only have 20 flavors to choose from. So without being able to, to replicate or to reuse uh, that same value, now I have 21 times 20, and this is uh, 420. So here now I have fewer options, because I can't use that same flavor more than once. I have 420 different varieties uh, of ice cream cone, uh, if I pick two out of those 21 flavors. If I pick a third flavor, so I have now this nice big tall ice cream. If I've already picked vanilla and chocolate, those two options no longer exist for that third scoop. So now I'm reduced here to having only 19 options available for that third scoop. So the total number of varieties of ice cream cones that I can produce, 20 times 21 now times 19. And so this is equal to 21 times 20 times 19, 7,980. 7,980 different varieties of ice cream cone if I can't use the same uh, flavor more than once. So the calculations as we've done them here, I think are probably uh, fairly straightforward. The formula that you may have seen for for this uh, for these types of calculations probably looks a little bit more intimidating than what it is we've done here. That formula for the number of permutations without replication, you've probably seen looks like this. That exclamation mark, of course, means factorial. So for example, well, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, or 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so it's just a, a slightly different mathematical operator uh, than you've probably seen elsewhere. So why such a complicated formula for what appears to be a fairly simple calculation? Well, it's because when we're working with small numbers, it is a simple calculation and it, it is relatively easy to do. If we're working with larger numbers in the thousand or in the millions, then it becomes a lot more tedious uh, to work with. And considering most scientific calculators have this function uh, available at the press of a key, it's actually not that difficult to do. So let's break it down uh, and just see what, uh, what it is we're doing here. So in the numerator, the numerator of this equation is really looking at what are all of the different ways that we can order 21 flavors? So if I'm gonna make an ice cream cone with 21 different uh, flavors, every single flavor, how many different ways can those be ordered? So that's 21 times 20 times 19 times 18, right? Because as I add another scoop onto it, there's one uh, less option available for the next scoop. So times 17 times, and all the way down to times 1. So that tells me, 
if I have 21 flavors of ice cream, how many different ways can I order those 21 flavors? Now, in the denominator, this is n minus n, which in our case is 21 minus 3. So this is just 18 factorial. What's happening with my pen? 18 factorial. So what that means now is this is going to be 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 times on and on and on times down to times 1. So how can we simplify this equation? Well, as you'll see, all of these just cancel out. 16s, everything cancels out down to that times 1. And we're left with 21 times 20 times 19, which is exactly the calculation that we just did to get this value of 7980. Now, if you were to do this on your calculator, let me just clear this. So here I have, right here, there's that n factorial button. So in the numerator, I have 21 factorial. So that tells me how many, if I were to make an ice cream cone with 21 scoops on it, that's how many different, I'm not even going to try to, I don't know how I would even say that number, but that's how many different varieties of ice cream cone I could produce. But I'm not concerned about all of them. I only want three of those. So I divide this by, let's open the bracket, so 21 minus 3 and factorial equals, there's our 7980. So it's, um, the formula can be a little bit tedious, but actually it's, it's really just a mathematical trick uh, that allows us to isolate just those uh, values within that factorial that, um, that we're interested in. Okay, so there we have our, our numbers, the different possible varieties of ice cream cone under these different scenarios. Uh, here I've made a little note, maybe I should have mentioned this at the beginning. The order in which the scoops are added counts. So in this case, you know, we're counting uh, an ice cream cone that has one scoop of vanilla at the bottom and a scoop of chocolate on top. That's different than an ice cream cone that has chocolate on the bottom and vanilla on top. Okay, so the order here is uh, important. If we were talking about combinations, then chocolate and vanilla, it doesn't matter what order they're in, it would just be one combination of, of those flavors. For permutations, it's absolutely um, the number of possible orders uh, that, that, we can, that we can sort these flavors in. Okay, uh, part uh, this last little section, considering scenario A, if you ask the employee to guess what you want, what is the probability that he will make exactly the ice cream cone that you want? So in uh, scenario A, that first one, it would be a one and 444. So let's, uh, let's just see what that would be in decimal form. One divided by 444. Oh, that's... Uh, 0.2 percent, eh? 0 0.002 out of the other. If uh, I have three scoops, it's one out of 9,261. And scenario B, one out of 420, or one out of 7,980. So probabilities of just getting that employee to guess. Uh, exactly the ice cream cone that I want out of all of those possible varieties is uh, pretty slim. Okay, so I hope this helps make permutations clear, makes the calculations clear. Uh, we're going to be using this formula a little bit, and I'm going to use this formula when we have the conversation on combinations, because there's just a little adjustment that we're going to make to this uh, in order to count combinations. So, I hope that helps. Thank you for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>